As a presenter, you need to learn how to gain the respect of the audience. If you don't, you're going to struggle. Watch closely so you learn what to do first and what to do next so you can shape up your presentation. You're presenting and you notice that the audience is not giving you attention and you notice you're not getting the level of respect that you thought you would get being a presenter up in front. Well, something to realize is that a presenter who assumes that the audience is naturally going to give you respect is a wrong way of thinking. Respect is earned. It is not just freely given. When an audience comes together to listen to you speak, they are cautious about how much respect they're going to give you because people have been manipulated. People have been tricked. People have been promised and under delivered. People have gone through a lot of problems in the world today and they're super sensitive of where they're going to give their levels of respect. So what you do is there are certain things you've got to do in the presentation to build that respect. Now, how long does it take? Well, it depends on how well you can deliver these particular steps. So I've got for you four different parts of a process of building respect with the audience. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just stand up and do your presentation and let the audience be exactly where they're at. But if you're like me, you like it when the audience talks to their friends and sends their friends to you as a referral. And I think you like it when people leave your presentation and they talk good about you. I will never forget the day that I had 900 people in a room and before my three day event was over, those 900 people had literally talked to 1,200 people and not only talked to them, but actually registered 1,200 people for the next event. Talk about a major compliment and a major feedback as that they respected myself and respected my wife in how we do our presentations. That's huge. I mean, how many times do you have an audience reach out and inspire 1,200 people to come to your next event because of the way you're being up on stage? So here's some very important parts to add to your presentation to build that respect from students. The first one has to do with the level of credibility you lay out to the audience. Now, most people think credibility needs to be about how big your business is, all the awards that you've achieved, and all your greatness. That's not what credibility is all about. They want to know, can they trust you? And having all that success actually sometimes can make people a little leery about you because it's all about what you've been able to do. But credibility needs to be about you as, now I'm going to speak about me, about me being a father, me being a husband, me being a business owner, a neighbor. What kind of hobbies do I like to participate in? You know, why do I have a business? Not what has my business done, but why do I have a business? Those are important credibility points to share with the audience. Now, a, a mistake that people make is when they're doing presentations is when they get out there in front, they immediately go into their credibility piece. And it's like, no, 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 no. Now, one of the smartest things you can do at the beginning of a presentation is tell a story about something that you've experienced. Just anything, anything that you've experienced that has some good principle to it, but let them learn about you during your storytelling experience. You know, I have a story that I tell where I, when I was 18 years old, I found a skunk that had a jar on its head and I pulled the jar off the skunk's head. But the story takes about 20 minutes. Amongst that story, they find that I'm somebody to trust. They find that I care about nature. They find that I'm careful and considerate. They find that I care about my friends. 
that I respect family, I respect myself. There's like all these things they learn from a story. So another thing about credibility is you don't come out with this list of credibility and you just give it to the people. No, let them find those levels of credibility in how you're talking about the topic, the class, your stories. Let them discover that. But here's the important part. They need to find these credibility parts within the first 30 minutes of your class. First 30 minutes, they need to be able to discover them, not be told them. If you have to tell somebody that you're credible on what you're doing, yeah, they actually are gonna be a little leery of you because you had to tell them. So start out your presentation with a great story and let them watch you. Let them listen to you. Okay, next one. Another way to earn the respect of the audience is to create safety in the room. And I don't see very many presenters do this. And it makes me like, why, why are they not doing this? When I go to a class and I'm sitting around people I don't know, and I don't know what's gonna happen in the class, I'm feeling a little edgy. You know, it's like, okay, we're all here, but what's gonna happen, what's gonna go on, what's expected of me, what's the presenter gonna deliver? So for you to be able to lay out the guidelines and the safety rules for the class, you will literally feel the audience settle down and trust you because people trust people who care about safety. Because when you, when you don't address the safety factors of a class, then they feel like it's unsafe because they're unsure and you're gonna get a lot less respect. But boy, you cover some safety guidelines and rules for a class, you're gonna feel that respect happen right there in the moment of establishing that. And when I do this, I like to cover three or four rules when I'm talking about that. Next one has to do with you being authentic. So how, how do people not be authentic? Well, presenters, they have this little, this line and you know it, if you've been presenting for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I bring this up. There's this line where you get to be you, but if you cross the line, you now start to show off. You start to enjoy the attention from the audience, and now you start to be this little show off on stage. That's not authentic. What's authentic is over here where you talk about not only what you're teaching, but you talk about your own struggles and how you got through those struggles and what you learned. But to help earn respect, and I know this is gonna sound pretty weird, but to earn respect in an authentic way from your audience, tell them of, their, of your recent struggle and how much it beat you up and how much you really wrestled with it. And then of course, tell them what you did to get through it. Your audience will sit there and be like, wow, I like you. You are open enough to tell me what is just whooping you right now in your life. Now that's, that's pretty important. Most people are not vulnerable enough and they're not open enough to be that way. They feel like they gotta get on stage and like they only talk about, you know, all their good stuff. That's not impressive anymore. About three, four years ago, that was impressive to be up on stage and you have no flaws. But now people are like, ah, eh, you're totally a fake if you have nothing wrong with you. And so instead of waiting for them to find out something wrong with you, just tell them what's going wrong in your life. Tell them what beat you up, what scarred you, what, what wounded you lately, and what did you do about it? Boy, they're gonna love that part. And guess what happens? You earn respect. Because you're human too. You're human too. Okay, number four. Number four. When you teach an audience information, you gotta give them time to process. I went to a class recently, because I still, I still go to classes, workshops, seminars, trainings, because I, I, I love education. I love personal development. But I was at this class and, oh my goodness, it was so rushed. I mean, there was so much information and then we were given a very short amount of time to process and to ask questions. And then when we asked questions, it didn't sound like the presenter actually wanted to answer our questions because of the way that they were answered. So as a student, I know that I highly respect presenters who have planned into their content 
to give me time to reflect, time to ponder, and even time to discuss or ask questions about what we just learned. And so for you, if you leave this piece out of planning time for the students to interact or to interact with you in processing and asking questions, if you don't include that in your presentation, you're going to lose respect because you're gonna feel like you're pushy, you're aggressive, you have high expectation. And what will happen is they will slowly, one by one, disconnect from you. They'll just disconnect and you'll pay the price because a room that has an audience that does not respect the presenter is an audience that is not paying attention. And then they start doing things that are not safe and you now have a reckless audience. And here's the crazy thing, but it's an important thing. You created it, not them. When an audience is reckless, it's because you lack the skill of creating the respect. And when I hear a presenter who's like, oh, that audience was so out of control, what I heard them say was, I don't know how to establish respect. They don't know these four simple beginning steps of building respect. They don't know what it takes. So don't let that happen again. From this point on, you know what to do. Look at your plan, look at what you're teaching, and you plan for these things. You put this into the curriculum and you begin using this process and so that you can gain the respect from your audience. That is a powerful experience because when they respect you, they're at their top level of learning. And isn't that what we all want as presenters? Is for the audience to excel. You know you have room to grow, right? As a presenter, come on, you know that. And yeah, you may be doing a few good presentations here and there, but come on, let's rise up into that next level of skill level. So put into play what you just learned and click the link below and get yourself to this class called Present Yourself. Let's move you up to a higher level of presentation skill so you can rock and roll and move people, move people to take action in their life. I know that's what you want. Let's raise your skills one step at a time. Oh, and before you go, click subscribe. Thank you.